Our next coach is a seven-star diamond coach from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She joined Team Beachbody in 2010, 2012 elite coach, 21 months in a row for Success Club, and a Success Club 5 All-Star. Let's welcome to the stage seven-star diamond coach, Katie Hefner! to be up here and sharing all of my super secret little techniques with you. And I know Mark said that he has the best topic, but truly, let's be honest, I think, I think mine's gonna top it. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about driving coach engagement today. So how to actually get your coaches to post in the group and be excited to go to the Coach Basics group. So I want you to consider this. What is it that you want your team to experience in the Coach Basics group? What is it that your team needs? What do you want them to get out of it? So when I think about my team, my coaches, the people who are in my organization, I really want to help them build a strong foundation for their business. But for me, it goes beyond the business. I want them to be a tight-knit family. I want them to bond with their peers and feel like they've joined almost a sisterhood. Now, for you, that could be a different experience, but when I think about my coaches, that's my goal for my group. So, before you even add your coaches to the group, you need to think about things like that. You also want to figure out what kind of coach they are. So, do you have someone who's a discount coach right now? I was a discount coach when I started, and I know I wasn't ready to just dive into the business. Do you have someone who's a wait and see? So they really just want to focus on being in a challenge group and focusing on their experience right now. And down the road, they're ready to take on the business side. Or do you have someone who's ready to hit the ground running and they're ready to take on the business side and they want to learn everything they could possibly learn? So when you have someone who is ready to hit the ground running, that's when I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. And I let them know upfront what my expectation is for them. I let them know what I want them to get out of the group and I let them know what I want that journey to look like. So I tried to think back to like when I was a new coach and if I was added to a group and I didn't have a lot of experience being in a group before, what would I think my role was? If you told me I was going to join a training group, I might think, okay, I'm here to watch, listen, and learn. And I should only post a question if I have one or only post if I have something I'm struggling with. Instead, what you want to do is have a conversation and let them know, not only do I want you to post frequently, but I actually need you to post so that you and I can together create the experience I want the team to have. And let them know how important their voice is in that group. So you want to set them up for success. Have them plan to participate. So have them pull out their planner or however they organize their day and have them commit with you about a time that they want to block out that they're going to check into that group. Now, because I love my team so much, I really put a lot of my heart, a lot of time, and a lot of passion into these groups. So I do expect a lot in return. So because of that, I have what I call a strike three policy. What I do is everyone in my group, I put their name on a Google Excel spreadsheet, and I have 60 days going across the top. Each day that they participate or satisfy that lesson, I put a little check mark in that box for their, that day. And I share that document with them so that they can see if maybe there's a lesson that they missed. You know, things got crazy busy. They didn't realize on the 14th there was a lesson. So they can go back and easily find that lesson and satisfy that requirement. Now, if they start to miss lessons, this is how I can tell, you know, who's participating and who's not. And I can look at my sheet and say, okay, I have this coach who hasn't been engaging in the group. Now I can reach out to them one-on-one -on -one and find out what's going on. Now sometimes they have things going on in their life, you know, let's be real here, like things come up. So maybe they're in the process of moving or maybe they're getting their kids back into school. But sometimes it's something a little bit deeper than that. They're feeling overwhelmed, they're struggling, they're feeling not very confident about posting in the group. They're nervous about it. And you can kind of uncover some of those struggles that they're having and get them back on track. So I let them know if they miss more than three lessons, that's gonna get them a conversation with me that might not be you know, the most pleasant. Um, but they can either get back on track or they can reapply to join a, my group at a later date when it better fits in their schedule and when they feel like they can give it their all. 
Now, the interesting thing about this is once I started implementing the strike three policy, they take participation very seriously. So if I have a coach who misses a lesson, they literally text me that day, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, please don't kick me out of the group, I promise I'm not being the slacker. And they at least let me know what's going on in their world. So I highly recommend implementing something similar to that. Okay, this is like my favorite, my favorite part. Um, because I do believe in your group that you have to set the tone, you have to set that expectation right up front, and I do like them to know that it's going to be a fun environment for them. So, I think you know, a lot of this for me goes into attraction marketing. What does my team need? What are my coaches like? And a lot of them are very similar to me. So they're single, they're not married, they don't have kids. Um, but what they do have <laughs> is a fur baby. They have a pet that they love very much. So I want to explain this assignment, and I want to encourage you guys to really personalize it and make it work for you and your team. So I wanted to start with something that's very fun, very lighthearted, and easy to post. If you have a new coach coming in and you're asking them to share their goals and their dreams with strangers, some of them might break out in hives. Like, they might be a little bit nervous about doing that. So anyone that I know who has a pet has pictures right on their phone, and it takes five seconds to just go in the group and upload it really quickly. So that's my first assignment. I say, share your pet. Post a picture of your pet. So as you can see from the screenshot, this is one of my actual groups. And the coach engagement and the activity goes from zero to berserk when you do this. So just to give you a couple other examples, maybe you want to do a theme. So Halloween's coming up. What are they going to be for Halloween? Or what are their kids going to be for Halloween? Maybe you have a travel-inspired one. What was their favorite vacation? Or where do they want to go this year? So really have fun with that and make it your own. The next assignment I have them do is an introduction video and I have them upload it on YouTube and share it in the group. Now the second part of this assignment is they must watch everyone else's video and comment on them. So it does a couple of things. Number one, it makes them feel special that people are watching their videos and it gives them that validation. It also gets them a little bit less nervous about posting on YouTube. So they already have their first first one up, so it's not really that big of a deal. And when they go on and they're commenting on each other's videos, they get to know one another. And they don't really know it yet, but they're actually forming each other because they're asking each other questions. So what I love about this assignment is, by the time you get to the first Google Hangout, there's no awkward silence. Nobody is nervous about getting on there and talking. In fact, by the time we get on there, they're chatty Cathy's on there, and we have to like focus and get down to business. My next tip for you is to really empower your coaches. So I like to let them know that their voice needs to be heard. You know, what they have to say is very important. And you can look at the different personality types of your coaches and give them a role in the group. Maybe it's someone that's more meticulous. So that person, I will ask them to be in charge of tracking the daily assignments and making sure that they're checking off everyone's box. Maybe you have a coach who has a really fun personality. So I had a coach who, she was very much like a cheerleader. And I asked her once a week to just do like a fun mindset video to get everyone interested in the group. And she was so hilarious. So everyone always looked forward to her post. And that encouraged her to post more on YouTube and really expand her social media experience. You want to connect with your coaches one on one. So I do feel like when you have someone who you know you're accountable to and you know you have to turn in your business activity tracker each week, if you know they're actually going to look at it, you're going to work a little bit harder that week. So it is important to give your coaches that one-on-one -on -one time and really dig deep and find out what's going on with them. My last tip for you is recognition. And this is where I really have a lot of fun. And I want to remind you guys that recognition doesn't always have to be about Success Club or PV. It can be little things. It can be you know, reinforcing positive behaviors that they're doing that you want them to continue. So maybe someone's really killing their workouts, or maybe someone was the first person to turn in their business activity tracker this week. Recognize that in the group, you know, give them a little shout out, and it's going to reinforce that behavior so that they continue to do it. Now, another fun recognition technique I have is I put together something called a coach prize pack. And I am definitely a paper and pen kind of girl. So I love having a physical business command center. So what I've done is I made a couple requirements for them to win this coach prize pack. And just to give you guys a, an example, it can be something simple like getting two challenge packs and attending Super Saturday. 
So looking at your business, you know, figure out what are those key behaviors that you want your coaches to do, and then you can set up a little prize that they get for accomplishing those. So in my coach prize pack, I include a laminated business activity tracker so they can check it off each day and send me a snapshot, the three vital behaviors, a call to action sheet, a contact list and a memory jogger, a pack of five of the product catalogs and the little printout of how to actually use them, the success from home magazine so they can see other coaches' success in the business and how they've been able to do that, and then the personal development book that I feel that coach needs to follow up the compound effect. So I know that they're gonna have their next book in hand. So those were my tips for you guys. I just wanna close by saying, you know, I really hope that you look at your team, your team's needs, personalize it, have fun with it. It doesn't have to be this group that they dread going into. The more fun you make it and the more they bond as a team, the stronger you guys are gonna be. So have fun with it and thank you.